Hi you, it's me, Nicole Phoenix Star, and this is the Nick Star Podcast. So, I had a couple of things I was going to talk about today, and then not so long ago, I had a whole big clarity piece drop in for me, um, but I feel that a lot of people could relate to and have a really, really big week this week. Like it's massive. And this morning after I did my morning workout, I had this huge sense of like waves of overwhelm, which weren't entirely a match for my thought threads because I knew that I have an everything kind of panned out in my schedule appropriately and everything always works out and that, you know, everything will get done. It always does. Yet there was these sensations in my body that were like, there was this sense of urgency and that urgency had like a flavor of what's the word? I don't know. Like the urgency just felt like that feeling that something, and I couldn't work out what that something was until I did, and I realized that. This afternoon I have a whole heap of spaciousness and I had this great pull to do a lot of preparation that isn't really necessary today for later in the week, but it was very noisy (laughs) saying, you know, do it, do it, do it now. And I'm like, I don't really need to do it now, but there was this like weird feedback in my body when my thought threads were like it's okay and that happens a lot when you're in today's life and busyness and particularly when you're at great kind of I don't know what's the word effect of your hormones which are very fickle um when you're perimenopause and menopause they're they're kind of really quite fickle you know I used to be lastminute.com Nick and I would you know do everything at the last minute that sort of Having to do it now it always really worked for me and I would kind of beast mode through and and that was my operating system. And, you know, the last couple of years I've been a little bit more what feels like organized, which is kind of confusing to me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so organized. Why is this? Um, and I realize now that it is a form of self-preservation and it's not about being organized. It's about really respecting the energy bank and the fickleness of hormones. So I realized that there is a part, the undercurrent was like, if you leave everything to the last minute and you have to go into beast mode, then your hormones are going to be compromised and you're not going to have the energy that you have come to appreciate so greatly and especially those you know who have always been able to push through and kind of like just keep going until you know and ignore all the signs um you don't have that luxury when you've got fickle hormones, no matter how healthy you are, 
you know, it's just the reality of having far less access and far less consistency in estrogen. You know, it's a buffer. It it, it is the um, is the very thing that allows us to push through and. Um, you know, be that women's energy that just keep going and it just isn't available at this season of our life, you know, and then we wonder why we're so exhausted and depleted and completely trashed. And it's like, well, you know, you did a million things. It's like, yeah, well, why shouldn't I be able to? I've always been able to and it's just ignoring the self. So it's really about recognizing there is a new way of operating and to truly honor yourself and to truly, you know, work with how things are now. You have to change things up. Um, otherwise you'll just get smashed. <laughs> you know, like there is so much talk of burnout and, you know, like just dead, tired to the bone, you know, doing things that I used to be able to do and I can't anymore and, you know, trying to work out how to get back to that way and it's just a pointless exercise. So when this all dropped in today, I was like, oh, okay, it's a form of self-preservation, you know, spend a couple of hours this afternoon setting yourself up so that you don't have to draw into those energy stores that lead to depletion, knowing that you have a really, really, really big, busy week. Um, and all the things that are in my calendar this week are really important to me and they are a determined timeline and it's not like I can filter any out and it's completely unnecessary. What is necessary is for me to, to really look at how I can serve myself best. And that is recognizing the urgency that I do have today to do a whole heap of preparation because I have the time and space and the energy to do it so that later in the week, I'm not, you know, trying to steal energy from the future. I remember the first time I heard that term you always steal energy from the future. And I was like, wow. It landed so deeply, you know, like the busyness has been glorified for so long and being able to head into that beast mode, it's just not appropriate for women, particularly those over 40. Like it's just ridiculous and detrimental and unnecessary. So, yeah, I just felt sharing this today may be the very thing that you need to hear. Um, because trying to, you know, live life the way we used to in our 20s and 30s and even in our... 40s <laughs> um, really is a very unkind thing to do to thyself. So I am loving the organized version of myself who is actually very kind in ensuring that I don't get to those places where I have to activate beast mode or steal energy from the future or put myself into levels of depletion where I wipe myself out and it can get really tricky especially when you're have mastered your energy levels and you do feel a level of you know previous normal and that comes from you know, very intentional uh, nutrition 
where there's lots of nutrients and high density nutrients, low calorie. You can just eat a lot and it gives you so much energy and keeps your body in a level of vitality that, you know, sometimes some women haven't experienced for years. And, you know, having a strong body, it can be a little bit deceiving that you can do as much, but irrespective of how healthy you are and how fit you are, your hormones are still incredibly fickle. And it's a form of ensuring women honour themselves. You know, it's like, you might be strong and healthy, darling, but if you're going to, you know, push yourself, uh, you'll feel like crap again. It's that simple. It really is like any time there's that level of exhaustion and depletion, it comes from overdoing. You can always trace it back to overdoing. And when you do have the energy, I don't know, you seem to get a billion things done. And when you're trying to force yourself, when you don't have that energy, it seems to take 10 times as long to get things done. And so, you know, ignoring the ideal that you need to push through to get it done, you'll find somehow you can stretch time when it's more appropriate for you to do it. And you'd be like, how did I do all of that in such a short amount of time? Like, how am I so efficient? It's because you're doing it at a time you're honoring yourself. And you're not pushing through and, and completely depleting your hormone levels. And it's really hard for women to truly understand that this is the way things are. Like, there's no changing you know, even women on HRT or, you know, hormone patches and hormone creams and stuff, it doesn't bank up infinite levels of hormones to access. It doesn't work that way. It's like really understanding that this is a new operating system. And if I don't honor myself, the system just goes into revolt, <laughs> goes on strike. Yeah. And it does every single time. So once we get that, there's this tenderness that comes to how we treat ourselves. And that comes with its own whole weird dynamics as considering, you know, what your belief systems are or what your conditioning is that, you know, honoring myself as being selfish. It's like, oh, God, the age old nonsense that women tell themselves, you know, I need to put everyone else in front of me. You can't serve your family or thrive in your career or be much for anyone if you're running on pollution fumes and it really is a matter about shifting the conditioning across society just educating everyone that just because a woman is in perimenopause and menopause doesn't mean they're no longer able to do the job it's just that they do it differently and you'll find that when they're on their efficiency is beyond anything incomparable but when they need to order themselves it's essential and we can't work the same way we used to it's just it's a loop and this cycle of depletion recovery rebuild depletion it just goes on and on and on. It really is about being able to navigate it in a way where 
you self-serve and you set yourself up so that you aren't abusing your energy stores and you aren't trying to steal energy from the future because then you'll be able to like navigate life in a way that just blows your mind. So that is where I have landed today and all the weird overwhelm and heaviness in my body has completely shifted because I realized that there's this undercurrent of self-preservation that the urgency of, of doing this afternoon represents so that I'm not beast moding the rest of the week. And I love that. I feel I feel so happy that the call of self honoring was so loud. Because I don't ignore myself and you know, perimenopause was such a weird journey for me because I I had really intense anxiety in my body and someone that has mastered their mind incredibly over the years and what was going on in the mind was not matching what was going on in the body was so confusing and to feel like extreme hardcore anxiety in your body and going I don't know why my body's doing this like what is the danger <laughs> what is going on here there is nothing <laughs> terrifying at all and it just presents like anxiety but what it is is raging hormones because we don't know we label it as something that we can try to make sense of and it's not that you know depression and anxiety is such a common symptom reported by women and it's like it's not, you know, textbook depression. It's not textbook anxiety at all. It's raging hormones trying to get your attention. And if you're able to balance those hormones, that sense or that experience that feels like anxiety will go away. And so will the depression and perhaps the um, extreme prescription habit of antidepressants in menopausal women will deplete one can only hope when women are more educated on hormonal symptoms of perimenopause that look like traditional symptoms because that's what we're seeking is a label and a fix and how to get back to normal there is no going back it's really working out you know, what this new operating system is and how it works and how to uh, honour that because it's completely different. You know, it's like going from Android to Apple. Pre-menopause to peri perimenopause is like going Android to Apple. That's a fascinating analogy that just came out of my mouth, isn't it? That... And you, and 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 you never and you never can go back to Android, <laughs> like it, it's just people just want to feel like the way they used to and to be able to live the way they used to, and that's this whole illusion that trips up women. And you know, you will have heat surges for the next twenty years, like every single woman does runs hot no matter how extreme their symptoms are that's just what the body does in whole in menopause like it's just what it does some are really hardcore and some are just slight fluctuations it's just what is you know just like when we start puberty you know we can't go back to not having pubic care. We can't go back to not having, you know, periods or things like that. Menopause for women is out the other side of the hormonal 
journey from puberty, potential pregnancy, menopause. Like this is just the changes in your body that happen and to try and make them into a different season of your life is just not a thing. So I'm just so thrilled at the amount of education and, and voices that are coming out about letting women and society and their partners and their children and their work, you know, co colleagues, if they can be educated in a different season of life and not expect every man, woman, and child to function the same way, then as a society, we will have a far greater way of navigating life. And that, you know, it, it, there's no restriction, it's just different. You know, it's still a computer or it's still a phone, still does the same thing, just operates in a different way. And that's what we need to learn and share. Take all the shame and weird crap out of it. So, yeah, my greatest priority for a long time is navigating my energy and making sure I don't slip into the crisis chaos that projected me into this journey because things got so, so crazy. And then, you know, that propelled me into three years of intense study on hormones, on perimenopause, on menopause, on, you know, reading medical textbooks and nutrition and exercise that's appropriate for this age. You know, it's like educated myself and I was my greatest test study. And I shout it out to anyone that wants to listen because it's extraordinary. Like once you really get to know the operating system and the, the coding that is the hormonal reality of perimenopause and menopause and you, you get it and you know how to work it, it's a level of freedom you can't even imagine. And sometimes, you know, things sneak up like today. What is this weird sensation in my body that feels like urgency and overwhelm? What, why, why is my body doing that? What do I need to listen to? Oh, she's just making sure I don't empty the energy stores and put myself into depletion later in the week. So intelligent. The body, his intelligence is extraordinary. To be able to truly listen, it's the kindest thing you can do to yourself. All right, my love, that's all I'm going to share this week. Thank you so much for listening. Please feel free to share this podcast link with anyone that you think may get a benefit from it or needs to hear it. I appreciate you. My website is www.nickstar.com. There'll be lots of updates coming to that website very soon. Very excited. I'll let you know when they're done. N-I-K-S-T-A-R-R. -R. I love you. Bye.